So this is my Ream 18,000 watt uh, tankless water heater and it sets next to my gas fired Ream water heater. Now I went with one of each for a particular reason. Uh, normally in my situation my gas water heater is just fine for two or three, four people in my house but I had my daughter move back into the home with me with her husband and her children and this water heater had a hard time keeping up and so I installed this water heater as well and so in high demands what I've been doing is I've been putting this water heater on a lower setting and then preheating the water with my gas which is a little bit cheaper and then I'm sending it through a series of valves and hoses and stuff into my electric water heater that will bring it up to a temperature such like for a shower to uh, heat it up so I have this for the economy I have this for you could say for the emergency and so I kind of have the both both of both worlds right now I'm pretty much just using this thing because uh, electricity is expensive and the water demand is is such that I really don't need to use my electric hot water heater right now but I want to kind of give you some feedback on this it was pretty simple to uh, to install I'm lucky because parts of my house are still available to run wires and so running the wire was pretty simple especially with my service box only being 25 feet away but it's pretty simple to operate you just push it once it turns on and you can see up here it'll give me the set point of where I want to put my water depending on the temperature I want to have it at I think it maxed out at 140 let's check this out yeah so 140 is going to be the maximum amount and that's way beyond scalding I believe what scalding is down to about 120 degrees or so and then just another push of the button will turn it off so let's open this thing up and I'll show you what it looks like inside this is the internal workings of an electric on-demand tankless water heater so you know you have the button right there uh, so basically you need four positions in your uh, in your service box to power this beast and so you can see down here uh, although th these are well they're really not neutrals per se but they're they're different legs of my uh, for my breaker box I have four legs here going into the, the box and then you can see that right up here there's uh, two electric elements they're going into this tube here to uh, provide the heat all this is copper so the water flows in here goes up through this, this the initial sensor that tells what the temperature of the water is coming coming in goes to the control box goes up to the first heating element comes down goes across comes up to the second e heating element comes back down and out so all I have to do to get this thing working again is I just have to move some valves around up here I can bypass my gas water heater if it, gas water heater if I need to and we'll be doing this for my little demonstration uh, to see how quickly this uh, water heater will heat my cold water coming into my house so this is my service box and what was lucky for me is when I built my house I fitted my uh, laundry room with gas and electric and right now I have a gas water excuse I have a gas dryer up there and so I had this service box right here this is a 40 amp breaker that originally went to my dryer and so I was able to swap this out uh, and get two legs coming out of here for the water heater and I was able to move some other breakers down here to get the other two legs for my water heater and so I was able to uh, do this quite simple to uh, provide the electricity for my electric water heater 
and sometimes you might have to move some breakers around, maybe go with some tandem breakers, but because everything is still open in this utility room, running the wires was extremely easy. So to get a baseline, I'm running the water into this jar, and so our water temperature coming into the house, well, at least coming up here to this sink faucet, is 43.9 degrees, so basically it's 44 degrees, and that's going to be a lot colder than most people have coming into their homes, and that's one of the challenges I have in trying to heat my water. Now, according to Scientific America, the average temperature of cold water coming into a house is 55 degrees, but they do say the water temperature can drop down to 45 degrees. Well, that's a normal occurrence for me. Last year when I was doing a temperature check, I actually had water when it was a frigidly cold last year below zero. My water was 37 degrees. What we're going to do, we're going to change the valving in here and make it so that the water is going to flow into the on-demand tankless heater instead of flowing into my other hot water heaters. Okay, the water comes here, goes there, comes in here. These have to be opened up. It's going to flood, but it comes back, goes up there, and out to the house. So, that should be correct. Okay. So we're going to turn this on, and we're going to crank this guy all the way up to 140, and we're going to see what happens when we turn on the uh, water up in the kitchen and see how hot it can get. I'm going to have to run this for a while and get all the hot water out of here that was heated by the gas heater, and we'll have to see what the temperature is coming from the on-demand heater. Okay, so we're at 134, 135 degrees uh, coming out of this faucet. So that's about, and considering that my water temperature coming into the house is around 44 degrees, that's the 91, okay, that's 136. So that is a 92 degree uh, increase, and this is still slowly inching up. So we're about ready to get to 137. If you remember that we set our water heater downstairs at 140. So we're at 137. That's not too bad. But this is only one single appliance that is running. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna go turn on my shower in one of the bathrooms and see what happens. So I went and turned on one of my showers all the way to the hot position. And yeah, normally no one's going to be sh showering when the hot water, uh, when the uh, faucet control is over, over, all the way over in the hot. But our water temperature dropped from 137 degrees here at this location, and it's now down to 84.4, so 84 degrees. And so right now, the uh, on-demand electric tankless water heater is being taxed pretty much as far as it can. So we're about 84, 85 degrees right now, and it's struggling keeping up. And that would be pretty, uh, that would be a cold shower, to shower at 85 degrees. But just for the fun of it, I'm gonna open up another sink behind me and we're gonna see what happens. Okay, we dropped down to 81. Well, let's see where it's going. It's still dropping here. Seventy nine degrees. Getting down around seventy eight. And this would be awful cold for a shower. So right now I have a shower going and two sinks going. And it just breaks my heart having to waste this water, but I guess I gotta prove a point. So we're approaching 76 degrees. It looks like it's stabled off. Now we're down to 75 degrees, so it may drop one or two more degrees. So 
the water rate coming into the house was at 44 degrees. Now we're now at 75 degrees with two sinks and one shower running. I turned off the shower, I turned off the other sink, and we're at 119 degrees, ready to hit 120 degrees. So this is the only thing that's using hot water that I know of. When I started this video, I was home alone, but uh, my daughter's family came home downstairs, and there's a good chance that she's using uh, the sink and maybe the dishwasher or something. And so. This is 128, 129, so no doubt this would rebound back to where we once were, but someone might be using hot water somewhere in the house. So I hope you find this information helpful if you're thinking about purchasing an on-demand hot water heater. I could have purchased a gas one and stuck it next to my uh, gas tank water heater. But personally, I think the electric can respond faster than a gas one. I can't say that for certain, and no, I don't have any facts on that, but it seems like electricity can respond quicker than gas can. So anyway, there you go. If you're thinking about buying an on-demand water heater, I hope that you might may have found uh, this helpful. Like I said, most people do not have 44 degree water coming into their house and so that's one of the challenges with trying to heat my very cold water in the winter time. If I made this video in the summertime things would be different because my water would be much warmer. So I hope you enjoyed this. Subscribe and thank you for your time.